Hi there, and thanks for checking back. Now before I start my topic today, I want to tell you a funny story. So you're probably thinking, what the heck? But I'll explain after I tell the story. So my first job as a counselor when I was in undergraduate school was at this camp for boys. And what, it, what they mean when they say camp for boys means that they've gotten in trouble with the law but they're under 18, so they can't go to jail, so they send them to these sort of rehabilitation camps. And part of my job was to counsel them as well as help them with any schoolwork issues that they had, because um, a lot of them had trouble reading and writing, just basic um, school things. And a funny thing happened at lunch that I had to ask my supervisor about, because I wondered what in the heck was happening. So some boys would only drink 2% milk. A whole table of them all drank 2% milk. Okay. And then a whole other side of the cafeteria, and these were very separated. Another side of the cafeteria only drank whole milk. I thought, that's really weird. How can they all possibly like the same type of milk? That's just really bizarre. My supervisor said, well, different gangs have different colors affiliated with them. One gang is blue. That's 2%. 2% milk is blue because it's written in blue ink. Whole milk is red. That gang's affiliated with a red color. So they only drink whole milk. I thought that was kind of ridiculous. I want to drink whatever the hell kind of milk I want to drink, and I'm not going to do it just because it's one kind of color, right? So I guess the whole point of this story is the bracelets. Blue and red. I've heard a lot, from a lot of things, a lot of you know chatter between you guys because one's associated with anorexia, the other one associated with bulimia. They don't own the colors. Why can't I wear red and blue if I want to wear red and blue? I think that's kind of ridiculous. But I appreciate the information, obviously. And I actually haven't had a patient that's told me about these bracelet colors before. Um, and it made me even think back if anybody was ever wearing those. But to be honest, when you buy a bracelet on my site, it means what I say it means. These were created with, with love by my best friend to help us out. Blue is reflection, red is strength. There are no other meanings. I know that many of you think, well, people are going to think. Nobody knows. Only the eating disorder world apparently knows, and I didn't even know because it's never been a topic of conversation with a client or anything. So I encourage you, break out of the norm. You don't have to drink the 2% milk or the whole milk. You don't have to only wear red and blue when it means anorexia or it means bulimia. It means what it means to you. It's just like anything. I wear a certain necklace because this, you know, reminds me of this and I got it from this person or I got it at this time and it's, it's more than what everybody else says it means. It's what it means to me. Blue means reflection, red means strength, and I think all of us need a little bit of both in our lives. So that's just my, my story and um, I understand where you guys are coming from, but I encourage you to, to break out of the mold. We'll, you know, we'll be rebels. So now on today's topic, the topic comes from a um, follower on YouTube and she had questions about art therapy. Now I personally have done art therapy. When I was younger, my therapist had me do a lot of different art um, techniques and I'm sure many of you have had it either when you've been inpatient, they do some different um, groups that are purely art or maybe your therapist will have you do an art project as part of your, you know, I don't know, part of the treatment plan that she has for you. And it can really help us, not only is it therapeutic to do art itself, coloring, like I've said before, I really like to color, doing collages where you kind of cut out different things and you paste. I even think sometimes on Tumblr, it's almost like art when you're putting together a post and things like that. Um, if, it's, if it's positive or it's expressing an emotion, a negative emotion that you have trouble talking about, it can be a way of expression. And so a lot of therapists use art therapy as a way to help you express emotions that you don't like to express. Does that make sense? So it's because eating disorder patients, we tend to kind of stuff our emotions and feel like we don't deserve them and they have no right and I don't know where they came from and they're not real, I don't really have to feel any... You get what I'm, where I'm going with this. We all have those like, well, I don't have a right to be angry because, you know, she is right. No. You have a right to feel how you feel. Emotions come out of a natural, ex our bodies naturally express and we naturally feel them. We don't force them on ourselves. And so art can be a great way to express these. 
And that's why a lot of times when any of you are telling me I'm really stressed out or I'm really anxious, I'll say, you know, paint, color, do collages, do any kind of art that can be really helpful. And when you're in art therapy, the, um, whoever your therapist will have you bring in what you've been working on and kind of go over it with you. A lot of times we'll show more in that than we even realize because it's almost like my anger video when I said to take a red crayon and color an entire piece of construction paper or whatever paper red and it can feel really good. A lot of times when your therapist will tell you to think about something like think about your sister or your mother or your brother or whatever while you do this. I want you to focus in on that experience or that person while you do this and it will show a lot about how you feel. And to be honest, I actually like to see how I feel sometimes. That can really help me own it. Yes, that is true. I have been frustrated. I have felt abandoned. I have been hurt, whatever. So that's really all there is to art therapy. I mean, in, in to kind of, you know, concentrate it. There are a lot of little nuances and different therapists have different beliefs, but that's why art therapy is used a lot with eating disorders. And they won't share your art unless you say that they can. They're not gonna, you know, it's not about how good you are as an artist, because I tell you what, I'm terrible, and that was really helpful for me. I can't draw, you know, at all. I, I can stay within the lines, maybe that's why I like coloring. But anyway, they're not judging you on how well you do it. It's just a great, healthy way to express how you're feeling, and it can be really cathartic. So I encourage all of you, try things. Run to the, the store, the local, you know, Target, or whatever you have, Walmart, or CVS, and grab a coloring book and some color crowns, and See how it feels. It can feel really good. And see if it shows you anything that you might not normally want to express. Okay? Leave any comments below. Let me know if you've been in art therapy, how it worked for you, what you noticed. Maybe there's little things that your therapist did that were really helpful. And these are things a lot of times we can do at home. So it's a great way to jumpstart our treatment and to start working towards recovery. Okay? And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, I have, I put out a video every week and you'll get notified to that. And it's just a great way to keep working on our community as we take one step after another towards a healthy mind and a healthy body.